Hello and welcome to our workshop on census flow data. My name is Vasilis Rutsis and together with me is Oliver Duke Williams. Uh, both of us are based at the Department of Information Studies at UCL. So um, the structure of this workshop, um, the first part uh, is done what we do, that we're doing now, uh, the welcome and the polls. Uh, we're gonna move forward with the presentation um, about what actually are flow data. Um, we will then demonstrate how to download, uh, how to access and download data uh, from the UK data service. And uh, then we're going to have um, uh, a lab, a practical activity on retrieving data. And uh, then we're going to get some feedback from you about that activity and uh, some general questions and answers about census flow data. So um, before I start, I'll just um, to, to apologize because of the interface. I mean, um, it lacks a bit, you know, um, the interactivity that uh, we have used recently using other platforms. Um, so um, you're not able to speak or share video or anything. So you're only able to type in questions. Um, Oliver will be monitoring those questions and we will be answering all of them. Um, but still, um, the workshop will lack some sort of interactivity and um, as far as I know UK data service um, will catch up with uh, more modern platforms so the next workshops and webinars will be using uh, more robust platforms um, to catch up with the latest developments um, that have been accelerated due to the COVID-19 crisis. So um, what is the UK data service first? So UK Data Service is a comprehensive resource funded by the Economic and Social Research Council, ESRC, which is now part of the UKRI, uh, which stands for UK Research and Innovation. Uh, it is a single point of access to a wide range of secondary social science data. And more importantly, it provides support, training and guidance on how to access and use those data for your own research. So what's our census flow data? Um, sometimes in the literature, you will also find um, other names for flow data, such as interaction data or origin and destination data. But more recently, uh, we're trying to stick with flow data, uh, but we, we use those terms interchangeably. So flow data, interaction data, and origin and destination data is um, regarding UK census uh, is more or less the same thing. Um, so flow data consists of counts of flows between two locations, an origin and a destination. Uh, some examples include migration data within or and to UK, the UK, um, commuting data, uh, for example, um, commuting for travel uh, for work purposes, uh, journeys to school, and movements associated with a second residence. Uh, so uh, those flows can be between two locations anywhere in the UK, like in this example from London to Birmingham, uh, or it can be flows within the limits of a city, for example, to go from home to work, like this example in Glasgow. And uh, it can also be flows between uh, within the same area, because we count those as well, so th they don't have to be between two different areas. Um, data. The data are produced at different spatial scales, and this makes the processing of such data sometimes a bit more complex. Um, this is an example, a sample of uh, some of the most popular 2011 census spatial scales. So we can see that um, at, uh, at the bottom of the pyramid, uh, we have the output areas, uh, uh, which consist of more than 200,000 um, areas. Then we have the lower layer uh, super output areas uh, with more or less 40,000 uh, units, wards almost 10,000, middle super uh, output areas 9,000, local authorities 400. And there are some others like regions or countries uh, which simply consist of England, uh, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland. And uh, in most cases, um, you can aggregate from the lower to the um, higher um, spatial scale. 
So um, Flow Data website offers some lookup tables that you can do that. Uh, but sometimes um, there are um, the, uh, the boundaries of those scales are um, uh, overlapping. Uh, so in that point, uh, there is a best fit scenar scenario to mitigate the problem. So they're all not all scales are compatible. For example, words and MSOAs are not 100% compatible. So you need to have a best fit approach uh, in order to uh, convert um, one scale to another. So as well as normal areas, which are the spatial um, locations, flows can also be associated with various aggregate and pseudo-spatial uh, areas, such as, for example, overseas, uh, work offshore, or work at home, uh, which we anticipate will become much popular uh, in the next uh, census. And um, one thing to note is that uh, there has been different handling of cases uh, such as this over time. So um, those pseudo spatial um, um, geographies uh, were treated differently until 2001, different in 2011 in terms of wording and stuff like that. So uh, there's not 100% coherence between uh, among uh, the different uh, censuses over time. Um, flow data, uh, because of the complexity, are one of the last census data products because counts have to be collated from the three different national statistical agencies. So uh, here is the map of the UK. Uh, for England and Wales, uh, there is the Office for National Statistics, ONS. For Scotland, uh, there is the National Records of Scotland. And for Northern Ireland, uh, it's the Northern Ireland Statistics and Research Agency, NISRA. Um, so the progress of flow data sets. In 1981, uh, things were a bit simpler. We only had the migration statistics and the workplace statistics. Uh, as things progressed, 1991 uh, more or less remained the same. 2001, uh, we still have the migration statistics, but um, on top of the workplace, we also have the special travel statistics, um, which were only uh, produced in Scotland. Um, and uh, for the rest of the UK, uh, the workplace statistics remained uh, unaffected. And in 2011, uh, we have some more uh, splits on the data. So we have uh, the regular migration data, uh, but a part of that also became the special student statistics. Um, when uh, uh, someone um, identified uh, that uh, their previous uh, location um, uh, house uh, was student related. And then um, together with um, workplace statistics, we also have the special resident statistics, which are related to um second residences and 2021 uh we still have no idea but we anticipate there will be more or less closer to 2011 rather than any of the previous censuses so we think it should be more or less uh like 2011. um so access to data until uh, all the data, all the census data until 2001 are um, available to the public. You don't have to register. You just go through the website, uh, log in as a guest without any password and uh, download the data freely. But data from 2011 uh, is a bit more complex in terms of uh, access because we have multiple levels of access and uh, there is a trade-off between uh, special detail and attribute detail. Uh, I'm gonna show what I mean later. And there's also different routes to using the data. Um, so though this little cloud, uh, let's say it's census flow data, and um, it's split between four types of data sets, as I discussed earlier. So it's the migration uh, data, the workplace data, the student data, and the second residency uh, data. Uh, then we have this uh, special level, so we can have uh, uh, local authority districts, middle super output areas, wards, output areas, and workplace zones. 
and uh, we we saw that you know uh, between those uh, different spatial levels, there is a huge difference on the level of detail um, about the areas that they are, they are describing. And um, a crucial thing, the security level for 2011. Um, so we have okay the public data, but we also have the safeguarded data. Uh, that um, that means that you cannot just go to the website and download um, uh, those ta uh, those tables. You will have to first register U U UKDS. You will have to be a member of academia or uh, or, gov or UK government and um, then be able to download that data with some restrictions on how you share uh, the outputs. And uh, we also have the secure data, uh, which are not available on any website. And uh, you'll have to get a uh, special license from ONS, uh, go there. I'm, I'm not quite sure what's happening now with COVID-19, to be honest, but you, you need to go to a secure lab and download this data. Um, and then we have the attribute detail. Um, we have the head counts, which are the simplest ones because they are just the total of people. We have the univariate um, and the multivariate. I'm going to explain those uh, in a bit. So um, the various data sets all stem from questions on the census form. So as we saw for 2011, we have four types of um, uh, census flow data tables. The migration ones are flows between an origin and a destination and are based to question 21 of the um, uh, census questionnaire, which was the question, what was your usual address one year ago? The student tables are, as I said, a subset of migration data. And um, um, there are tables for people who have indicated that their address one year ago was a student or school address. The workplace tables are related to journeys to work. Uh, there are flows between a residence and the workplace, and they're based on uh, question 40. Your main job, what is the address of your workplace? And then we have the second residence tables. Um, so there are several different sets of flows. Uh, first residence to second residence, second residence to work, and all these are based on questions five and six for England and Wales only. And that question is, do you stay at another address for more than 30 days a year? And if so, what is that address? So these are the questions uh, that actually um, uh, build uh, the census flow data. So there are some uh, significant changes on the um, how the date the census flow data is structured between uh, 2011 and the previous censuses. So up until 2001, um, the flow data were grouped into sets. For like for example, 1991 uh, migration set one, 2001 uh, workplace level two, uh, etc. So all these sets uh, were like some super groups because they contained uh, several other tables. And um, all these tables within that set were defined by the same combination of geographies. Uh, so we had an origin uh, a geography, so like for example, wards, districts, etc., and a destination uh, geography. And in some cases, a few additional non-spatial categories like uh, the ones that we described earlier. And um, this was a bit of a more simple approach because you had less tables uh, a few sets, and then you could select uh, the table within that set. Uh, whereas for 2011 data, um, um, we don't have the explicit supersets that contain tables. So we have uh, hundreds of separate tables, and its family uh, consists of them. And um, more important, those tables um, within them, they do not have common geography definitions. So that sometimes make it more complex to analyze those data uh, compared to the past. So there are some easy ways to identify a table just by using, just by seeing their ID. Um, as I said, the tables cannot be grouped into sets as easily as before. Um, but uh, we can get some hints about what that table is 
but that's looking at the name. So the census 21 tables start um, with a letter, which can be either M, W, S, or R. And that first letter uh, responds to M for migration, W for workplace, S for student, and R for second residence. And then uh, the next letter can be either F, U, or uh, M. And um, this corresponds to F for whole headcount, U for univariate table, and M for multivariate table. Uh, then there is a number, uh, uh, usually uh, in an NN format, so it can be 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, etc. And um, sometimes they also have a suffix like ABC for further splitting the table up. And uh, this number corresponds on what the actual data uh, is on that table. And uh, finally, we have um, the geographical uh, specification of uh, the table, so which can be UK, England and Wales, Northern Ireland, and um, I think that's what's the, uh, it can be either UK, uh, EW for England and Wales and Northern Ireland. Uh, I'm not quite sure if we have any tables only for Scotland, but in theory it could be, yes. Uh, so, for example, to break down that table, so we can see that the M corresponds for migration, F for flow as a headcount, uh, the simplest type of uh, table. 02 is the table number, and UK means that uh, that table covers the entire UK, uh, United Kingdom. Um, so, as I said earlier, um, for 2011 census data, um, we have three levels of user access. The first one is the public one, um, and the public data uh, can be downloaded through UK data service, but also directly uh, via the Office for National Statistics or the NOMIS web, uh, uh, which uh, is um, an OS, ONS related website about uh, labor statistics and um, those data use uh, the open government license and you don't have to register or login um, in order to access and download them. Whereas safeguarded data are available only via UK data service to members of academia, local and central government, NHS and UK parliaments and assemblies um, via the end user license uh, the users need to accept um, uh, when they register with the UK data service before they are able to download any safeguarded data. And finally, we have the secure data as well. Um, the secure data are the most, as the, as the word says, the most secure data because you cannot download them from a website. Uh, you will have to apply to become an approved researcher via the approved researcher scheme um, at ONS. Uh, using uh, what is now called the ONS Secure Research Service, SRS, which uh, until recently was uh, known as the Virtual Micro uh, Microdata Laboratory. Um, regarding the safeguarded uh, access, again, you do not get automatic access if you have, uh, if, even if you're, um, in theory, eligible for the safeguarded data. So if you're a member of academia, and you have an ACUK uh, email suffix, you will still not be able to download any safeguarded data unless you first register with, um, uh, with the UK data service, and then all the data will become, uh, all the safeguarded data uh, will become available to you. Um, so how the system currently works is by uh, checking the email suffixes, um, and this is an indicative list of um, some of the permitted email suffixes, so it's ACUK for academia, GovUK for government agencies, NHS for NHS, and Parliament, Scottish Parliament, uh, Welsh Government, and Scottish Government. Um, so, um, yeah, if you have any of these email suffixes, you mean that you, you can get the data as long as 
uh, you have um, uh, registered prior and accepted the end user license uh, with GKDS. Sometimes this approach causes some anomalies because there are some rare instances that um, some government or academic bodies uh, staff working there do not have the appropriate email suffix like ACUK or GovUK. Uh, for example, they can just have a .com. Um, and uh, that, th th those rare, rare cases sometimes cause discrepancies because um, uh, the email suffixes here is an agreement between ONS and UK data service. So it's difficult to overcome. So if something like that happens, usually you will have to go straight to ONS to grant your license before downloading any safeguarded data. Um, so back to types of uh, census flow data. Uh, I promise that I'll explain a bit more what the difference between the headcount, univariate, and multivariate tables. So as you can see on the top, uh, the flow headcount, um, as for example, the MF02 UK uh, table um, is the simplest form of flow data because it consists of totals. So we have uh, the origin destination and then just the number of persons um, uh, that, that were included in the, that flow. Um, then we have a bit more complex table, um, the univariate one, and uh, this is these are tables that relate to one single variable. So we can see instead of having a total, uh, we have uh, a family status variable. So we have lots of rows about uh, describing uh, the different family status, and then a total of persons uh, corresponding to each one uh, of these rows. And then it's the multivariate tables, uh, which are the most complicated and bigger ones and the more detailed ones. And um, uh, those um, are cross-classified, uh, um, uh, cross-classify one variable with another. So in this example, um, we cross-classify family status uh, with sex. So it's um, you can see the level of detail increases significant, significantly from the previous types. So we have 30 different cases for this particular example um, because each one uh, is a different case. So we can have we can select um, people age 65 and over that are not in a family and are, for example, specifically female or we can, you know, exclude um, uh, a gender, uh, not a gender, a sex for this particular example. Oh, another, another thing is that 2021 will probably taint some of the approaches on that. So I think we will no longer have um, identify um, sex as is. Uh, we, uh, the, the question will be rebranded as uh, gender and we'll have more inclusive answers. So that's good thing moving forward. So um, the security classification. So as I said, flows, headcounts are the simplest type of forms and the less detailed ones. So in the less detailed geography as well, like for example, local authority to local authority, all of the 2011 tables are, are made public. So you can just go and download them uh, without any hassle of registering or anything else but as we move to more um, lower level geographies that have more areas and become more uh, detailed uh, then we can see um, that uh, most of those tables have safeguarded with the exception of some workplace statistics uh, in England and Wales that are public all the other one um, are safeguarded from words uh, to um, um, middle super output areas, to workplace zones, to output areas. Uh, next one is the univariate data sets, uh, which um, are a bit more detailed than the, uh, the head counts, but less detailed than the, the uh, multivariate ones. And the security classification here, you see that we also have some secure ones. So 
the output areas to output areas and the output areas to workplace zones are all secured. Uh, you cannot download this from UK data service. Uh, you will have to apply um, to become an accredited researcher on ONS, go to their lab and download and use the, uh, and use the data there. Um, but still, uh, the higher end uh, of the spectrum of, the, of geographies, like for example, in local authorities, uh, you can see that uh, for some variables like uh, sex, age, and method of travel, um, these tables are publicly available. All the others are safeguarded. Um, and this same is with the wards and MSOAs. Sex, age, and method of travel is public. All the others are safeguarded or even um, secure. And then the multivariate datasets, uh, which are the most detailed ones. Um, so the only public ones are the sex by AIDS uh, and local authority level, which is the less detailed ones. And some other vars are safeguarded and then all the rest are secured. Um, so you can see that there is a relation between the level of detail of the data sets like multivariate, uh, univariate and flow count and the level of detail of geographies. And this is uh, to protect uh, people from being identified uh, by the census question. So uh, these are precautions and measures that have been taken to um, secure the uh, any kind of leaks of uh, identities. Um, of people participating in the census survey. So that concludes the some generic information, some general information about census flow data. Um, what happens beyond? Um, within the current situation, most likely 2021, 2022 census will be the last traditional census as we know it. Um, uh, probably from 2030, one and beyond uh, what we call admin data will be used um, to replace census. Um, so those admin data uh, can be data from the NHS, data from mo uh, mobile phones use and everything that um, the government probably can have access to it. Uh, always, you know, um, um, uh, respecting or uh, there's always the issue of privacy in those terms, uh, but this is something that hasn't been uh, become concrete yet. So we don't exactly know how this uh, uh, go ahead, but there is a huge pool of information now available. Um, so um, the government thinks that um, census data uh, are something that uh, soon will become something of the past. Um, the first batches of 2021 census flow data are not expected before late 2022, and that is because of the complexity of uh, the flow data. Although um, we think that because now m m most of this uh, census collection uh, is online, um, so will be significantly. Uh, speedier than the previous censuses uh, where everything had to be digitized. Uh, the papers had to be digitized before being processed. So for 2011, it took up more than three, three and a half years for the first uh, 2011 batches to become available. And um, now it would probably take a year and a half, two years at the most. Um, but because of the COVID-19 situation, uh, emergency, um, we expect harmonization issues because, as probably most of you know, Scotland has decided to uh, postpone uh, their census to 2022, whereas all the rest of the um, agencies will still go ahead for March 2021. And uh, this will cause some issues, especially for flow data uh, and especially between cross-border flows uh, from Scotland to England and Wales, for example. And um, uh, it's also a matter of the quality of the data because probably in 2021, March, most people will still be working from home. Whereas 2022, 
we hope uh, that more or less we have we will have moved on from this COVID nineteen thing, and um, so it, it will be though the, the data between those two censuses might not be a hundred percent comparable. Uh, so we, we expect to see a spike from of working from home for England, uh, Wales, and Northern Ireland. But uh, for Scotland, it might be a bit different in 2022. So sort of all those, all those are issues, and um, discussions are being made at the moment on how to mitigate those problems um, that we anticipate uh, to face uh, in a few years while, when we process the data. Um, so an example of using the data. Um, so a table uh, called MM01, which is, uh, as we described earlier, uh, earlier, M for migration and M for multivariate. So that means that it's quite a detailed table. Um, allows us to look at flows at world level from origins outside the UK. So we can look the international migrants coming to the UK. Um, so processing that, um, downloading the data from our website, putting that into a database. Uh, we prefer PostgreSQL because it allows uh, much more advanced on special data uh, than other types of databases like um, MySQL, uh, but this is just some uh, personal uh, preferences anyway. Um, so what we did, we download the data, uh, load them in the, um, an SQL database and uh, regret it, uh, re aggregate it on the basis of origin and flow size. And then we grouped by origin. So we could find how many words had X as the most common country of origin. And uh, then we look at the number of the countries. So um, just the final poll before we move on demonstrating how to download data. Um, so what do you think um, is the most common origin country for migrants from outside the UK um, uh, in uh, 897 words, which is uh, the absolute most frequently seen most common origin country. So what do you think is, uh, which country you think is uh, the most this one is Australia, China, India, Poland, or Spain. Most of you identified Poland, uh, followed by India, China, and then last, Australia and Spain. But the reality is wrong answer for most of you. And uh, congratulations to the 9% <laughs> that identified Australia. So Australia is the most uh, popular country in terms of uh, migrating to to having the, the largest number of words uh, migrating in the UK, followed by Spain, um, USA, and then Poland, um, followed by the uh, other uh, European Union accession countries, uh, Germany, France, India, other Middle East, and then uh and then at the bottom uh china so you see some, some sometimes the, the census data can um so as uh, unexpected results and um um that kind of su su surpass the, our existing knowledge knowledge or sometimes our biases uh so um this is an example of you know as uh, what census data can give us with a very simple and basic um uh, processing of the uh, data available uh, through our website. And uh, this is just um, the words um, that uh, Australians have preferred in the UK. Um, this has been um, visualized using QGIS uh, with the code, with, with the data that uh, were produced in um, our PostgreSQL. And these are the words for Spain and the USA. Um, so yeah, you can, uh, using s s uh, maps, maps like this, uh, it's, it becomes easier to see, you know, um, where international migrants go with uh, across the UK and it makes, um, and it has an impact on uh, public policy making. Okay, so 
what I'm going to do now is share my screen and I'm going to demonstrate on how to download data using uh, the Wicked um, tool that we have at the UK data service. So I'm going to use Google Chrome, which is one of the most uh, popular uh, web browsers. So let's head to uh, the uh, UK data service main website. Oh, just another note. Um, not only UK data service uh, is soon to use more robust um, 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 tools for video conferencing, but also the website uh, soon will get uh, uh, a, revamp, a, rev a revamp. So in the future, in the near future, uh, expect it to look much more neatly, much more, you know, uh, much better, uh, but will look different on uh, what I'm going to show you. Um, I'm not quite sure when the launch is, but it should be fairly soon. Okay, so this is the main UK data service uh, website. There's lots of information around uh, news, uh, how to deposit data, uh, how to find data. We will only interesting for the census data at the moment. So if we scroll down, um, we will see um, some of the most prominent data types offered by UK data service and census data on top of it, uh, because census data are uh, quite sig significant for the UK data service. So if, if we click on that link, uh, we will move to the main census support uh, page uh, within the UK data service website. Um, here is uh, the data catalog where we, you can search for specific data sets, uh, some latest tweets, uh, various information. And then we have a quick access panel at the bottom right. And uh, you can access other, source, uh, other, flow, uh, sorry, other census data, such as aggregate data, micro data, and boundary data. Uh, but for today's workshop, uh, we're only interested for the flow data. So we click on that link. And this brings us to the next page, which is, which is the main UK data service flow data information page um, with some very generic information about flow data. And um, then Wicked, uh, that link uh, will bring us to the main website where we will be uh, using to download um, and access flow data. Just a reminder again that if you want to download safeguarded data and you haven't done and um uh, you're el uh, you're eligible you have an ac uk for example or a go of uk um email because you're a staff or a student or a researcher yeah, at a government body or uh, in higher or other education before downloading safeguarded data and uh, if you haven't done so you need to register Click register here, uh, put in your details, accept the end user license, and only then you will be able to log in and uh, access the safeguarded data. Right, so uh, if we click on the Wicked link here, um, so uh, we're getting to the main Wicked UK data service, which is the portal for accessing flow data. Uh, on top there is some information and then here um, this panel but the, uh, here uh, is the main uh, route um, uh, to access those kind of uh, data so the three options uh, wicked um, it's it, wicked is the flexible query builder uh, so you will be able to subset uh, create labels and stuff uh, like that because this is the most commonly used um, route to access flow data. Um, but uh, we also offer some other alternatives, such as the Wiki downloads, uh, which you can download bulk tables uh, as they were generated, as they were uh, produced by ONS. And uh, this is more particularly useful if you are an advanced user for example and you want to download a very very big table uh, then my, this approach might be best because you can 
get all the data, the bulk data, uh, which can be hundreds, uh, uh, hundreds of meg uh, gigabyte uh, or gigabytes, yes, or not hundreds, but <laughs> sorry, exaggerated a bit, but it could be like two or three gigabytes, um, and uh, then you can load it into your prepared system. For example, Excel will not work for such big tables, uh, but there are alternatives like SQL, like uh, are like SPSS or like Python. Um, so those are the most commonly used or Stata um, software and programming languages that more advanced users use in order to process the data and uh, reach their research objectives. Um, for this workshop, uh, we'll only handle some small data. Um, so here at the I'm not quite sure if you see um, uh, the pointer. If you see at the left, left, left hand side of the screen, um, there are some links, uh, some quick links that you can access some extra information. Um, for, so you can, for example, click on the available data and then you get some other types like uh, sample data sets, migration data, committing a journey, second residence, you see those are the, the types that I described earlier. And uh, for example, if you click on the migration data, you get a whole list of tables uh, for, um, that are migration related. Um, so an interesting thing is that if you notice, look at how many 2011 tables are for migration. Whoop. Whereas sets uh, that have several tables included inside them and releasing the tables um, explicitly on their own. Um, so, uh, um, UK uh, census flow data. And uh, for example, if we click on the UK local authorities 2011, uh, we get some information and we can generate a list of the tables and we see here because uh, if we download the bulk data, we won't get the description like the area. We will only get this part, uh, uh, the area code, uh, which usually doesn't make much sense, uh, but Wicked offers uh, lookup tables that allows you to match uh, an area to its area name. This is not always the case though because for example for output areas um output areas yeah uh, we have two uh, two hundred thousand more than two hundred thousand uh areas so that's there's no way to put a label on that so you can see that uh, you will have to deal uh only with codes okay uh so let's go back to the home page so we'll start by the simplest way of retrieving data from a wiki website, which is the wiki downloads. So if we click on that link, brings us to the login page. So if we, if we want to download safeguarded data, then we need to follow this route, um, login using our institutional account. Uh, and uh, this will only work uh, if we have already uh, registered with UKDS. Uh, for the purposes of this workshop, uh, this is not needed because we're going to work with public data. So we were uh, going to click on the standard login, whereas, whereas no username or password is required. Okay, that brings us to the um, uh, flow data downloads page, the bulk downloads page. Um, so we have the categories here. So if we log in, um, with a safeguarded uh, permission, uh, then there will be lots of other uh, categories here. But this is only for this only the public access only allows us a few tables to be downloaded. So if we click on that, this is an expandable uh, uh, list. Uh, we get some generic information like uh, when this those data were released, uh, the name of the publisher, uh, Office for National Statistics. And then we get a list of all the available of all the public uh, available uh, tables. 
So if you see on the table names, uh, they follow the structure that uh, we described earlier. Like we, we immediately able to identify that this is a migration table with head counts that covers the entire UK. Um, this is a second residence uh, table that only covers England and Wales. Uh, this is a student migration table um, uh, with multivariate um, uh, type of, of a multivariate type that covers the UK. Uh, this is a workplace uh, headcount table and so on. Um, so if you hover your mouse on top of the download, uh, you will get the, uh, the the size of the uh the uh, of the file of the file that you want to download and if you click here you get some quick information some extra information about that table uh so we have the table title table population cover and geography that is also available on the main list but we also get uh the description of the columns um within that table so we know uh, that the first column corresponds to areas usual residence, the second column corresponds to the country of address one year ago, and the third one is the uh, total persons. And if you notice, um, for migration tables, the origin um, is the second column and the destination is the first one. So country of address one year ago is the second column whereas the area of usual residence which is the current one is the first one this only happens for migration tables and this only happens for the bulk download tables because those are left intact um, as, uh, from ONS but if you use the other um, access route uh, wicked as I'm going to demonstrate to you in a bit uh, this problem is mitigated because uh the the, um, the correct uh order is uh restored so if we download that table uh we okay so it was downloaded you see it is a zip file so if i open that and extract uh extract the file okay so this is these are the contents of the zip file if we the, there is a text file that has some extra information um, to help you, there are some metadata for that table, and then the real deal uh, is the CSV file. A CSV file can be opened in uh, uh, Excel, SPSS, or it can be imported in R or Python uh, for further processing. So if I double click on that. Microsoft Excel should be able to open that. Yes, here it is. So look, um, so the first label is, the, as I said, the area of usual residence, which is um, uh, the, uh, the origin and destination, and then the the total number of flows uh, in the persons. And um, this is rel relatively small table that uh, can be easily uh, used, uh, you know, uh, loaded in Excel. Um, and uh, you notice that, again, those um, codes do not make much sense. So if I go, sorry, if I go back here, to the available data and open the supported geographies for the local uh, uh, where is the local local authorities birds uh, you see we get so 95 AA 95 AA corresponds to Antrim so I mean, you see that it's not, it's something more complex, at least for novice users to do that. Um, so that's why I will have implemented Wicked, uh, which can do all this work for you out of the box. 
instead of having to use a table, uh, download the lookup tables that I saw you now, and then try to find ways to merge those together so that areas like this uh, make sense and have their own unique area name. Okay. So we are going to go now through the main route of access, uh, which is uh, the wiki table builder. Um, so when we click on that, the first page uh, just gives us some summary of current query, but because we just started that, um, there's nothing. So we have selected zero origins, zero destinations, zero data items. Uh, so what we want to do is first is select uh, a data set to work with. Um, so that brings us to that page, the data selection page that gives us uh, quite a few options on how to find uh, the table that uh, we want to work with. Um, one of the uh, probably easiest approaches is to, if, if you're not familiar with the data, is to use the Table Finder. Uh, table Finder is an external service provided by Nobis Web. It, um, in you know uh, cooperation uh, with the UK data service and if you click on that uh, you will see that you are transferred to to Nomis web and then from here um, you can find all the origin in the destination or flow data as we say uh, available and uh, it provides filters uh, you can filter out tables by um, their availability uh, option so we can select only the secure ones or only the public ones or only the safeguarded ones. And then we can also uh, filter those using uh, variables. So if we want to see, uh, to find tables, safeguarded tables for that are related with, uh, let's say, hours of work. Okay, so we get those three tables. The Workplace Univariate 10 that covers the UK. Um, so uh, you can just click on the um, spatial uh, level that you want. You will be presented with a pop up, and then you can click on the Wicked interface because that table is safeguarded and it is only available through Wicked interface. So if you click that, uh, we're back in our website uh, on the landing page. Um, uh, with some options on how to download the data um, or how to select sorry, the data and move forward. And it also has the geography supported for this table, um, the variable, the, split, um, the breakdown of the variables, uh, etc. So that will give you a good hint whether uh, this is uh, the table that we're looking for or um, uh, you just want to skip and find another table. Um, so this is the uh, some demonstration of how to use the uh, uh, table finder. Um, sorry, but uh, there are also other um, routes. The quick selection one um, um, just selects the totals from the entire list. So if we can, if we click on the quick selection, you will see um, that there is a whole lot of tables the grayed eye the grayed out, out ones means that uh these tables are safeguarded and so you'll have to log in using the your academic or governmental account in order to be able to access them and the blue ones are the ones that uh the guest account can have access uh, in but again um the quick access one only gives you the totals you can select specific variables so if if I go back again and um, select uh, by data set and table, that will allow me uh, to select the subset of um, of the table. So let's go, for example, on migration data and uh, select. You see the options here. Uh, we have the the latest census 2010 2011 and uh, some previous censuses and some other data estimates that have produced. Um, so we select this one and um, 
let's use the first one, which is the, the mig uh, a, a multivariate migration table that covers the entire UK uh, at uh, local authority level. And it is about uh, internal migration by AIDS, by sex. So if we click on that, that will get us to another page uh, where we're, we will be able to select specific um, uh, subsets. So if we click here, uh, you see, now we, we're not only able to select uh, the entire totals, but we are also uh, able to select a subset of that. So let's compare um, uh, the migration between people aged between 16 and 49 and the older folks, 75 plus. Uh, so we select those. Um, Wicked uses a uh, traffic-like metaphor. So you see, now I select the data and that link, uh, that icon here became green and um, gives us a hint that we now need to select geography origins. And um, geography origins consists of several other options. The quick selection again, uh, gives us the opportunity to select all the supported geographies at once. Uh, but we can also um, go through a list select uh, to select um, geographies individually. For example, just uh, local authorities, confirm. And then we can, as you see, um, click on the uh, areas that we're interested in. You can change the order, etc. Um, but um, there's also other um, methods like the type in box, uh, where again, the local authorities, where you can just type a um, uh, name, like for example, like London, submit. So it uh, identifies the city of London uh, in, within the UK uh, local authority list. So that's our first selection. So now we have selected one uh, area as our origin. And but you see the geography is still red here because we need to select our destination as well. So now we have other options. We can again select all the available um, um, geographies. We can again list, we can copy the selection so we can duplicate what we selected uh, as origins to make it uh, the same as destinations. We can type in, we can use postcodes, or we can use uh, an interactive map um, that will give us, that gives us uh, more robust methods of um, uh, identifying the areas that uh, we want to include. So I'm going to go briefly on that. And this interactive map is only support, uh, only supports 2011 data. Uh, and it uh, doesn't support 2001. So if you click on that, you go straight to a big map uh, showing the UK, uh, because we selected London as an origin before. Uh, the application uh, wants to confirm that uh, we want to include London in this selection. Uh, we, click, we click yes, so we selected that. So as you can see down here, uh, we're on in the origins view. Um, so we can switch between origins and destinations. Uh, so if we call on the local authorities, um, let's find it. So you see city of London that was um, selected before. We can locate the area on map. Oh, here it is. So that's one of our selections, uh, uh, more of those. So for example, we can create a circle and select all the um, areas that um, the circle touches. And this is measured in kilometers. You see the radius as I try to make it bigger or smaller. Um, so let's, for example, select 30. Okay, you see now those 10 uh, different colors. So we select those. Um, we can also select, uh, or we can also remove with using that uh, icon. So we want to, set to remove that. And uh, another handy um, thing is that you 
can, for example, go on a higher level of geography. And let's say that we want to select all local authorities that fall within uh, that region. So we're going to use the magnet tool and click on Scotland. And then uh, I will get, we will get a, um, a list of all the available lower level um, geographies that are compatible uh, with the higher one. So now we want to select all individual local authorities within that uh, region, which is uh, Scotland. And we wait for a few seconds. OK, and there it is. It selected that. So if we go back to the UK local authorities, we see that all the uh, local authorities within Scotland uh, were selected. And I think we haven't selected anything for destination, so I'm just going to uh, put that in, I don't know, Northern Ireland creators and select those local authorities. Okay, so uh, that was a very quick demonstration. You can play around with that if you want, uh, but if you are if you're not unsure on you know um, the exact locations that you want to select for your research, I think that tool can become quite handy. So and you can see all the selections uh, here. This is for the destination. You can search on them. Um, you can locate them on the map, or uh, you can even uh, remove them from 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 here okay so what we want now is to go back to wicked um so we will click save and return okay the data has been exported so if we click here we'll see that uh now we have 43 origin selected and seven destinations selected the geography traffic light is green so that's in that gives us a hint that uh, we're ready to move on. So we go on finalize. Uh, this page gives us uh, an opportunity to also have a look at the summary of the query. Um, so these are the specific um, areas that we selected uh, together with the data set. And um, we're re uh, ready to go and run that query. OK. Uh, so that was done in less than half a second, and uh, we continue to the output pages. Um, so we're given two options now. We can either uh, tabulate the data and download them, or we can use some um, basic analysis like uh, finding correlations or some distances traveled. Um, this is not something that this workshop uh, will cover uh, because it will get a bit more complicated than it already is so i'm going to go straight to tabular output but uh in your own time if you want um feel free to um, um uh, play around with some of the uh, analysis tools that are available on wicked so we click on the tabular output and uh here we're given some more options um some of the most important ones the output layout um Origin destination matrix, so that generates um, a data output that with um, origins as rows and destinations as columns. Um, this is handy if the table is not very big, because if it's uh, if it's enormous, then that might cause uh, trouble and most likely won't be able to uh, load it into uh basic uh, software like uh, microsoft excel and we also have but we're also given other options like the origin destination pair list so this uh just puts uh all columns next to each other so we have one column with the origin one column with the destination and then uh the totals uh for each variable that we have selected uh for now I'll just select the destination pair list for this example and uh, we can also change the labels produced. So uh, the LA label will give us the actual names for the local authorities. But if we want to, we can also put um, the 
uh, area codes like those weird numbers like uh, nine uh, five AA uh, because maybe you want in the future to use a more advanced approach and you actually want um, those area codes to be included and we click change labels uh, we make sure that comma separated values uh, is selected this is important because um, HTML just don't cut it. I mean, it's it's fine if you just want to demonstrate uh, some very very minimal flows, but uh, all the other cases, it is best to generate them as a comma separated values because that's the way forward to uh, import the data in any kind of uh, processing tool and software. And uh, I think I think we're ready. Uh, pair list, comma separated values, change the labels. So preview and uh, and download. Okay, um, this so it, um, gives us some generic information uh, about what uh, we selected, and a uh, uh, preview, which is uh, not very helpful in this form. But uh, we're going to download the data and uh, open that. Uh, in Excel because it won't be a massive uh, file. So we go to download output data. The default file name is this one. Um, we can change it to whatever uh, we want. I think that tab was something like that. I'm not quite sure, but let's just put that name. Uh, again, save. Okay, so uh, this is straight into CSV and not a zip file. Um, so we open that in Excel and you see, uh, we now have both the local authority name, but uh, we also have the codes because I explicitly select them there. And the same one goes for the destinations. And, uh, then we have the actual data. Uh, so for example, we have, we only selected uh, four variables, I think, six with the totals. So we have people 68, 16 to 49, uh, and all sex, uh, we have uh, 60, 49 only male, 60, 49 only female, um, 75 plus uh, both sex, 75 plus sex male, and um, uh, 75 plus female. So, you know, it's very obvious with even with an egg dye that people 75 plus are extremely more likely to have moved uh, houses compared to uh, the younger counterparts. This is, of course, also because uh, the population of people between 16 and 49 is greater, but it also uh, might mean that um, other socioeconomic and uh, age related uh, things like uh, people, older people unable or unwilling to uh, move a house um, for any obvious reasons. So that was a very quick, um, you know, um, information that we can get by simply downloading a very simple uh, kind of data set from Wikid. Okay, so um, we're going to move on with the practical because we don't have much time. So if you notice on the dashboard of the GoToWebinar, uh, there is a handout um, uh, section. So if you can download that file and um, open that and go through these slides and try to download the data uh, by Wikid. And um, those Braves ones, or if you are more advanced in using the data, can also uh, run the final exercise, which is importing the data into Excel and um, running some um, fu uh, Excel functions that uh, will allow you to identify the most popular uh, uh, countries of origin into the UK. Um, so I think uh, I'll 
we, I, we, I'll, we should give like five, uh, seven minutes, uh, and then uh, another min, uh, another ten minutes for uh, feedback, questions, and answers, and um, uh, then wrap up the workshop. So in the meantime, I'm gonna have to look, go through the questions and try to answer them uh, as you um, go through the uh, the practical. If anyone has trouble opening the PDF file or whatever, please do let us know. Uh, if I mean, if you don't have time to do that now, it's it's fine. You can also do that later and send us any queries. We're more than happy to help you even after that works events. Um, so yeah, let's get started with the, um, with the handout. So if you followed all the steps and you open the table, uh, on Excel, you should be able to see something like that. So you see, as I said, because it's the matrix and not the parallelist, you have all the origins here as rows and you have all the destinations here, um, as, uh, columns. And um, uh, you get the totals because this is uh, a headcount table, and uh, you can see, uh, for example, I know, 18 people from Spain uh, moved to Hartpool between 2010 and 2011, and so on. And uh, the exercise um, uh, will require you to put some Excel functions towards the end. Um, in order to find the best, the, you know, the top countries uh, for migration for its uh, local authority. But uh, probably uh, we don't have time to do that now. Um, so feel free to do that uh, just uh, later and uh, just send us any uh, questions that you have. More than happy to answer. Yeah, I think it's time to wrap up. I mean, we're not getting any general questions. So, I mean, you can just send us any questions that you have uh, afterwards. Um, so the the details, uh, yeah, the emails are here. Um, so you can either uh, email me at the uh, v.rutis at ACUK or the Oduke Williams UCL ACUK. So if you have any trouble or any questions, um, send us all uh, any of your queries there and we'll be more than happy to uh, answer them for you. So I think that concludes the workshop. Uh, thank you very much all for attending.